Welcome everyone to the April TDL Member Forum. My name is Christy Park. I'm the Executive Director of the Texas Digital Library. As we gather in this shared virtual space, we'll start as we, uh, as we normally do by acknowledging the physical places from which we join, all located on the indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the ancestral name for what we now call North America. TDL staff uh, work remotely and we're all joining from different places around the state and across the country. I join from Austin in the Central Texas area where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land before their forcible removal. I invite you to share your own land acknowledgements in chat if you'd like to, and we'll share a link where you can learn more about the colonization lands of ind indigenous people in your area. We're going to follow our usual agenda today. Um, I'll be joined by Courtney Muma and Kiara Hunt in providing updates. And I just want to note that community update section is really the star today, as Kiara will be providing a lot of important info about TCDL coming up next month. Um, in just over one month, we'll be um, seeing many of you in person for that event, and we're really excited about it. And from now until then, uh, many of our staff will be pretty much full-time TCDL event planners. And so as a result, we'll be canceling the May 15th member forum since that's the week before the conference. So we'll, we'll um, be updating our website and, and send out an email notice as well to reflect that change. All right, so I'm going to start my director's update by um, acknowledging one of our staff members, Ima Adwak, because this will be Ima's final TDL forum as our resident digital librarian, since we're going to be canceling May. Um, many of you already know through your interactions with Ima in user group and other meetings that she has accepted a position as Assistant Digital Preservation Analyst at Rockefeller Archive Center starting at the end of June. And so her last day with TDL will be June 3rd. Ima joined TDL in September of 2022, I believe, to begin a three-year residency program in digital libraries with us. And since then, she has really become a valued and extremely valuable member of our staff and our wider TDL community. Um, she's done a number of residency rotations with various groups or individuals within the TDL community, including an accessibility rotation where she assessed and documented accessibility compliance of our DSpace hosting service. Uh, a GIS focused Python coding project and her current project, which is a digital preservation focused project with the University of Houston libraries. Uh, she's also contributed in countless other ways, large and small, tangible and intangible, and she's just a fantastic colleague and we're really going to miss her. Um, we're also extremely excited for her in this next chapter of her career and know we're going to be proud to say we knew her when. <laughs> um, I know you all joined me in wishing her the very best. And bonus, she will be still be around for TCDL 2024. So those of you in attendance will be able to wish her well in person. And if that's not an incentive to register and come to TCDL, I don't know what is. Uh, so thank you, Ima. And, and um, we'll have lots of opportunities between now and June 3rd to wish you well. And thank you, but uh, I didn't want to uh, miss this one. So next up, um, I want to mention this webinar that was held yesterday, which I know at least some of you attended, called the Right to Deposit, Uniform Guidance to Ensure Author Compliance and Public Access. This webinar was co-organized by the California Digital Library and the Authors Alliance to encourage federal agencies to provide uniform and clear guidance to authors about their right to deposit federally funded work in open repositories as part of their implementation plans for the Nelson memo. And TDL was a co-sponsor for this event as well. The Nelson memo, if you remember, is a White House OSTP or Office of Science and Technology Policy Directive to federal agencies that fund research. 
and it directs them to create policies that require their grantees to make the results of that research immediately available to the American public at no cost and without embargo. Federal agencies are required to implement those new policies by the end of 2025. And so agencies are in the process now of developing and seeking comment on how to implement this directive. And this webinar addressed a, a really important piece of this, which is the complicated author's rights landscape for scholarly publishing. So again, the Nelson memo requires grantees to publish in open access repositories without embargo, but subscription-based scholarly journals may have restrictive licensing and copyright policies that make it impossible or at least very difficult for researchers to comply with that mandate. So the solution that this group, including TDL, is advocating for is for federal agencies to invoke the federal deposit license in their policies and implementation plans for the Nelson memo. That deposit license already exists in some federal legislation. And it, it states that the federal awarding agency reserves a right to reproduce, publish, or otherwise use the work. So the Department of Energy has been relying on, on this license in the implementation of its public access policy for years now. And we hope that all federal agencies will adopt this approach in their implementation of the Nelson memo in order to reduce the complexity across all of these different plans for authors to make it simpler for them to comply with the OSTP memo. So TDL has signed a statement supporting this approach and others, all of you and your institutions are invited to sign on as well, either as individuals or representing institutions. So I'm gonna put links to the statement and the form to indicate endorsement in chat. And I invite all of you to, you know, read up on it, um, uh, endorse, in your own name if you would like to uh, and feel comfortable doing that and have discussion within your institutions about whether your institution can endorse uh, this statement. We want to, as much as possible, provide a kind of general consensus approach from higher education institutions and research institutions around this in order to um, hopefully get action from the federal agencies as they develop their implementation plans. Happy to answer questions as I'm able to um, about this when we get to the Q&A. All right. So now we'll move on, on into our services and project updates, starting with our DSpace hosting service. Our DSpace users group meets next Tuesday for our regular monthly meeting, and we'll also meet in person at TCDL on the afternoon of May 23rd. Um, we'll be doing some training on embargoes in DSpace at that in-person meeting, as well as providing an overview of version 8 of DSpace, which will be released in late spring or early summer. I also want to note, and this is, I failed to put this on the slide, that um, the DSpace users group has elected Lindsay Ford, head of scholarly communications at the University of Houston Clear Lake, as the group's vice chair for 2024. Lindsay will succeed Emily Johnson as chair uh, next year. So congratulations and thank you to Lindsay on, on taking on that role. Finally, the call for proposals for the North American DSpace Users Group meeting is open. And if you'll remember that meeting is taking place in Minneapolis in September and you are invited to submit a proposal by May 24th for that meeting. We would really love to see a strong contingent from our TDL community there in Minneapolis in the fall. And um, Nick Woodward and, and from TDL and Emily Johnson from UTSA are on the planning committee for that event. Um, and I know they would love to hear from you if you have any questions about that CFP or, or the meeting itself. Uh, we hope we'll have a, a good group going to Minneapolis next year. or I guess I should say later this year. Uh, Nick Woodward has also begun a project to upgrade our 83 hosted journal sites to the latest version of OJS, um, which is 
uh, OJS 3.4. And I'll reiterate something that I mentioned, I think, in the last forum, which is this isn't a major new release, but there are some new features and performance improvements in, in this release. And we'll share a link in chat to some information about what's new. Um, the OJS user group will be represented in the TCDL program in an idea lab session on quality assurance in open access journals, which is going to be about the process of getting indexed in the directory of open access journals or DOAJ. And Kristen Van Deest from Texas State is leading that session. It's it, it will also be supported by some ongoing collective assessment that the group is doing where we're looking at copyright and licensing policies and also preservation and archiving policies across TDL hosted journals. So it's, those are key components of any DOAJ application. So we invite you to come to that session uh, next month at TCDL. Our OER users group will also be meeting. Um, in person next month, tentatively set for May 23rd at lunchtime. And the group will also be gathering socially on Wednesday evening of that week. Details on that are TBD and will be shared through the OUG email list. So be on the lookout for that. And finally, for me, um, a reminder to everybody that as a member of TDL, your institution is eligible to join the Open Education Network as a direct institutional member at the reduced membership rate of $600 or $608. That's a third of the standard annual membership cost. And direct institutional membership gets your institution your own direct individual access to many OEN benefits, as well as steeper discounts on some professional development opportunities. We have a number of members already um, taking advantage of this benefit. Um, if you haven't, but you're interested in doing so for your institution, you need to contact OEN by May 1st. Uh, coming up soon. So we'll put a link in the chat where you can do that. And I'm happy to answer questions if you have them. I think that's it for me. I'm going to hand it over to Courtney next for some more service updates. Howdy, everybody. Um, so a quick Vireo update first. Frank Smutniak continues to update Vireo 4 versions to align with the most current release. All members on Vireo 4 should hear from Frank within the month so we can schedule your upgrade at a time that's most convenient for you. There will also be two sessions for Vireo users and curious at TCDL. There'll be an update from product manager Christopher Starcher and a birds of a feather. So we hope to see many of you there. Um, next up, the Texas Data Repository Steering Committee will also have their annual meeting at TCDL, um, and that's going to be on Tuesday, May 21st from noon until 2 in the Commons Conference Center. The Steering Committee is working on the agenda this month and has plans to elect a new vice chair and finalize the roadmap of projects for the coming year. Ongoing projects include strategies for sensitive and larger data sets, as well as data retention and preservation. The Digital Preservation Interest Group meets quarterly and will gather tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. In addition to supporting each other's successes and challenges, as we usually do, we'll also have Dr. Nancy McGovern of Global Archivist as our special guest. Um, some of you may have been present during Dr. McGovern's presentation of some soon-to-be-released digital preservation decision trees last week. In tomorrow's meeting, you'll have another opportunity to give feedback and get some expert advice. The decision trees themselves will be released on May 1st via regular TDL communications channels. And the Digital Preservation Interest Group will also meet at TCDL in person on Thursday, May 23rd from 8 to 9 a.m. at the Commons Conference Center. So now DPLA and Text Hub. The April quarterly harvest for the DPLA Text Hub is in progress. Thank you for updating your new collections and metadata changes within the deadline. We have two new members harvesting for the first time this quarter. Welcome UT Dallas and Rice. 
UT Dallas is harvesting from their Ex Libris Alma D repository, a first for our lead developer, Nick Woodward. Nick noted that Alma D harvests require noticeably more effort from the member institution to prepare the harvest, so much thanks to UT Dallas for their hard work. Rice is harvesting from Quartex, also a first for us. Rice is eager to add all their collections, which will significantly increase our contributions to the Tech Hub in DPLA. And in other news, um, some of you may have seen this, the DPLA launched a search for the next home of their cultural heritage aggregation program. They're now accepting expressions of interests. In parallel, they are in the process of raising a fund that will support this work in its new home. DPLA expects for the new home to be in place by the first quarter of 2025, so they hope to inform us of the selection um, of the new home by July. And of course, we'll share any new information with you as we get it. Next, we'll move into those community updates with our outreach coordinator, Kiara Hunt. Hello, everyone. Um, we have a lot of community updates for you all and mostly TCDO related. So first up, um, you can now view the schedule outline to start planning your TCDO experience. The outline is a bird's eye view of when and where sessions will take place during the conference. Um, so here's what's happening at the conference. On day one, we have our morning workshops, member group meetings, food truck lunchtime, we have the opening plenary featuring the award ceremony and keynote address by Dr. Patricia Sway from the Mellon Foundation, afternoon sessions, and the reception that will feature the poster session and scavenger hunt. A lot for day one. Day two, we have our breakfast sessions all day during, including martial arts and crochet networking opportunities. We're a combination, but it's gonna work, it's gonna work. Um, we're excited. We also have uh, opportunities for professional headshots and we will of course have lunch. And then moving on to day three, we will have breakfast, morning and afternoon member group meetings, mostly morning sessions. And then we'll have our closing plenary and um, of course lunch. So it's gonna be jam packed for the conference. The full program schedule will be out soon with more details for each session, but right now you can view that outline so you can just start planning everything and to have an amazing experience at the conference. Um, we'll share more details about the outline and um, of course you can meet Dr. Sway and read her bio. Next up, you can check out our TCDL resources, including our special hotel rates for the Hampton Inn and Fairfield Inn and Suites near the Domain area, which is really close to the Commons Conference Center. We also have recommended local restaurants, coffee shops, stores for last minute necessities, and more. The speaker orientation will be on Tuesday, April 30th from 2 to 3 p.m. for all of your FAQs. Uh, you can also see the calendar invite in the chat for that. The poster orientation and scavenger hunt details will be emailed to all of the poster presenters. And we'll also be publishing the FAQs on TDO.org. So keep an eye out for that. And you can see the chat for all of these important links. Next up, and of course, um, we're calling all of the early birds to please register for TCDL before May 3rd. The early bird ticket rate for TDL members is $300. And the rate will then increase to $350 for TDL members after May 3rd. And then that registration deadline will be May 17th. If you do have any questions about registration, please feel free to contact us at info at tdl.org. And then we'll share that registration link in the chat. Next up, the call for proposals is now open for the Virtual Digital Library Federation or DLL forum happening October 22nd through 23rd. The submission deadline is Wednesday, May 15th at 10.59 p.m. Central Time. You can see the link in the chat to read all the full CFP and submission um, information so you can submit your proposals. If you're curious about submitting a proposal, there will be a CFP office hour session on Tuesday, April 30th at 12 p.m. Central Time so you can learn more. 
So submissions from all sectors, backgrounds, and career stages are welcome. And you can join DLF and share your insights in digital libraries, cultural heritage, education, pedagogy, and more. And we'll share those details in the chat for you all. Next up, here are the upcoming meetings and events happening at TDL. These meetings and events are of course free and open to anyone and you're always welcome to invite your campus partners and non-TDL member colleagues in your network to join us. So first up we have Thursday, April 18th at 2 p.m. the Digital Preservation Interest Group Meeting. And on Monday, April 22nd at 3 p.m. we have the DSpace User Group Meeting. Friday, April 26th at 2 p.m. we have the GIS Interest Group Meeting. And again, on Tuesday, April 30th at 3 p.m., we have the CCDL speaker orientation. So you can check out all of our upcoming events and the May What's Happening in the chat. Next slide, please. As always, and lastly, Texas Digital Library celebrates collaboration amongst our community and with external partners and connects local work to a global ecosystem of digital library efforts. We offer many ways for current, new, and potential members to engage with our community, and you can view the latest updates and announcements for upcoming meetings, events, and programs on our special, on our social media channels, in our bi-weekly newsletter emails, and designated email listers. We share the link, we'll share the link in the chat for you all to get involved with us and connect with us. And don't be shy, you can tag us on social media and we'll love to engage with you all. It'll mostly be me. All right, and those are all of our community updates for now. For any questions, please email us at info at tdo.org. And thank you all, and I'll hand things back over to Christy. Thanks, Kira, and thanks, Courtney, for those updates. I am so impressed that we, we uh, that was a lot of information that we got through and through it, all of you. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, we'd love to hear them. You can put them in chat or... Um, if you want to raise your hand, we can call on you and you can ask it that way as well. Um, also, I'll note our, again, our um, anonymous feedback form that you can use if you have a question or suggestion that you want to send our way anonymously, you can do that as well. Um, and while we're, while we're waiting for a minute here, I'll just put in an extra plug for the DSpace, I'm sorry, not DSpace, the Digital Preservation Interest Group meeting coming up later this week, right, tomorrow, um, which will feature Dr. Nancy McGovern in attendance. Um, Dr. McGovern did a webinar for us last week on some new decision-making tools she developed specifically for our members around um, digital preservation workflows and decision making and she'll be there to answer questions um, so that'll be exciting I'm not seeing not seeing any chat not seeing any raised hands so I think we'll wrap it up there we are really excited to see you all uh, or many of you next month um, at in person at TCDL but I know in the meantime, we'll be seeing you virtually and user group meetings and other places. So um, take care and we will see you soon. Bye, everybody.